President Trump may look into revoking security clearances for former top intelligence officers in the Obama administration. But why do they even still have security clearances? I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. I guess, gentlemen, it, I'm, call me naive, but when I saw the headline that President Trump was was mulling uh, Ra Senator Rand Paul's suggestion that uh, former CIA chief John Brennan should lose his security clearance, I marveled that somebody who's no longer in government service had one. Now, since then, I've learned that James Comey reportedly responded to a, an inquiry by saying that he was read out when he left the agency, the FBI, that is, and uh, no longer has a, a high security clearance. But it has been common practice for decades for top officials to retain their security clearances, not allegedly as a courtesy to them, but for the benefit of government so that new intelligence officials at FBI, CIA, the, you know, the, the National Intelligence Directorate or other agencies will have access to their expertise and be able to read them in, so to speak, on what's going on and, and get their counsel. Um, Stephen Green, I, I'm a radical on this because I don't think anybody in government should even get to keep their title after they leave office. So oh, yeah. why why should anybody get to keep their security clearance? And was, was President Trump completely off the presidential reservation by suggesting he might revoke some of those? Uh, not at all. That's an executive department or executive branch issue, isn't it? Uh, how is that not under the president's purview? Or have, have I missed something? Is there something statuary here that uh, denies the president the power to run his branch the way he wants to? I think the Democrats have already torn down all the statuary, so I don't know the answer <laughs> to that question. <laughs> so, a uh, couple of things. One, I think I mentioned this during the backstage, but I want the wider audience to see this. It's not just government officials. My wife works for a defense contractor and got a security clearance 15 years ago. Uh, you know, the FBI did all the background checks and all that. I had to spend 20 minutes on the phone and trying to not tell the FBI that, yeah, my wife advocates a violent overthrow of the United States government. So, you know, I did bite my tongue on a couple of things, but she got her clearance and she quit twice, completely separated from the company, two years at a time to take care of our babies when they were babies and up to two years old. And when she came back to work both times, her security clearance was still there as though she had never missed a day of work. And that's the private sector, but that's still a government clearance approved by the FBI. So this kind of thing goes on all over the place, and I think it's wrong. And I'm a radical like you are, Scott, but maybe in a slightly different way. I think we classify far too much stuff, and I think we classify it for far too long, and it's mostly just bureaucratic ass covering. And we're supposed to be a free people who have to have the necessary knowledge to make intelligent voting decisions, and all of this classification denies us the ability to do that. That said, I think I have a uh, maybe a legal answer. Do you ever see Office Space, classic 90s comedy, one of my favorites. Mike Judge wrote and directed the thing. Uh, the company, the tech company, I think down in Austin is right-sizing, as we used to say in the 90s, and laying off a bunch of people. They had these two guys from corporate who would sit you down at a desk and start off your interview, you know, the are you going to keep your job interview with the question, what is it you say you do around here? And suddenly <laughs> you're on the spot, right? You've got to defend your own job to these guys who are looking to... Reduce the headcount, as they say. And what I would like to see is an exit interview for all these high-level guys in Washington, where you sit down, maybe maybe with a bipartisan panel, two guys, a Democrat, a Republican, maybe throw a Libertarian in there, too, and ask the question, what is it you say you did here? And then they will have to defend their performance. And if they can't defend their performance, they lose their security clearance so they cannot get rich doing tell-alls on, on their failures. Well, and that is the issue, isn't it, Bill? Because I think, uh, you know, John Brennan has found various uh, sources of employment outside of government, including consulting um, and uh, teaching. And, uh, you know, most of these guys, once they get out, uh, do some writing. Um, they literally can monetize uh, their their security clearances because people assume whether they are whether they're in the loop or not, whether they attend briefings or not in after their careers are over, um, they assume that they have these connections and that would be clued in. So essentially, we are providing an additional benefit 
that is not enumerated in any kind of employment contract. Um, and here we have John Brennan, a guy who you know rose to the position of CIA director despite boasting over the years that he had voted in the, uh, what was it, the 1976 election 76. or something, that he had voted for Gus Hall, the communist candidate, um, and who recently... Um, said that President, and this is Rand Paul's beef, by the way, that President uh, Trump uh, had committed treason in Helsinki at his press conference or his meeting with with uh, Russian President Vlad Vladimir Putin, <laughs> and um, and basically Rand Paul says, "Hey, we we execute people who commit treason." So basically, Brennan is calling for the execution of a sitting president of the United States. This guy shouldn't have a security clearance; shouldn't be able to monetize that. Um, Allegedly, uh, Bill, um, the FBI, former FBI director James Comey was read out and no longer has one. Why should anybody have one? Well, there's a lot to say here. Yeah. Um, first of all, some of the liberals are squealing about how uh, Trump doing this is limiting their, um, their free, free speech, speech rights. <laughs> the entire purpose of a security clearance is to limit your free speech rights. That's why they're there. That's what they're about. They are a specific sworn oath given to people of good background and a long history of being able to keep secrets in order to limit their freedom of speech is exactly what it does. It, it provides extremely uh, harsh consequences for having freedom of speech once you've been read into a program. By the way, uh, most people know there are different levels of classifications, confidential, yes. secret, top secret, and so on. But even if you hold a top secret clearance, it doesn't mean you get like everything. You don't yeah. suddenly get presented with the Wikipedia of all the cool stuff. <laughs> you are only, you are only um, allowed to know what you need to know. And if you are required to work on a certain job, they say that the expression that you used earlier, they, they read you into the job and they read you out of it. So in other words, before, before you are given the clearance in addition to your clearance, you have to, let's say you needed a top secret clearance for this major defense contract or something. You still can't work on that program until, until first of all, you successfully pass your, your background check, make sure you haven't leaked any secrets. And then they have to read to you what specifically you're allowed to know, what you're not allowed to know, what the consequences for, for all of this stuff is. This is what you're, here's, here's your opening package. And then when you get out, you're asked another series of questions in terms of, did you compromise this? Did you do this? This is what you can keep with you and so, so on and so on and so forth. Um, so look, a security clearance is like a credit report. And some people deserve credit cards because they're very good with credit and other people not so much. Uh, during the Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, before the Obama administration, when Hillary Clinton left office, she was broke. She was down to her last 300 grand or whatever it was, as you well remember. <laughs> um, and by the time she I became be Secretary so of State, yeah, eight years of George Bush, they've got 50, 60 million dollars in the Clinton Foundation. Now, they didn't get that by, by providing information that you can get on Wikipedia. Uh, Hillary Clinton's um, record with the email server, with specifically telling Uma Abedin to, to, if you can't get the clearance, then just take the C off of it and fax it to me. Uh, and the fact that Susan Rice and Uma Abedin have very close ties to Iran, you know, all of this stuff is like giving, it's like giving a, a $100,000 line of credit to a person with a credit score of 300. It's just <laughs> not a good or wise thing to do. Of course they should be revoked. I think they, everybody should be revoked. The second you're out of office, your security clearance is revoked. And this idea that, well, we need to have their expertise and their wisdom. Well, they can stay more or less on top of things if they want to. They've got personal contacts and those contacts will tell them what they can tell them without violating their own security clearances. And if that person has a particularly strong insight or if uh, even better, if somebody in the government decides, hey, we need to know what this guy has to say about this read them in on that subject, limit it to this. There you go for the duration. Thank you. There's your opinion. And, and we've given you all the stuff we need to give you. And now the pipeline is closed. Our security services have become an absolute sieve. And why spend 20 years and, you know, three, four, five hundred billion dollars developing stealth technology when all you have to do is just hire a guy for a couple hundred grand. And he takes it all out with a, with a thumb drive, right? I mean, how much money have we spent on defense that has simply walked out the door and just given to people, starting with the atomic bomb, for example. Yeah. So yeah, we need to get serious about this. And that means consequences for security leaks, it means jail time. 
Uh, hey, I Bill, one, 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 can I add just uh, one thing, Bill? You know, you sure. talk about uh, these guys who need their security clearance after they're out of office for their wise counsel or whatnot. But, you know, Obama, when he was president, always said that he found out important stuff from just reading the papers like you did this morning. And so that should be good enough for these guys as well. It's because he's a congenital liar. But the, but the thing <laughs> that he also <laughs> said he was his best counselor. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because it was a point I had forgotten. It's a critical point. Barack Obama would not have been able to pass the lowest level of security uh -huh. clearance. He would not have gotten, he would not have been able to get, if he was a private citizen, he would not have been able to get a confidential rating because of his history of associating with uh, Palestinians, Marxists, uh, terrorists like Bill Ayers. The president of the United States was not qualified to have the lowest level security clearance, right. which needless to say, once he was elected, uh, pretty much made that point moot. But I and many others who take this seriously say, if the president of the United States, ca as a candidate, cannot pass a top secret security clearance interview, then they have no business being the president of the United States. Yeah, yeah I, I grew concerned during the course of reading this article that I may be one of the few people in this country who, who have no sort of security clearance. I mean, when you think of all the people that have worked in some connection with government, not just direct go government employees now, but retired government employees, p uh, people who have periodically gone into and out of government during various administrations, people who work for defense contractors and other sorts of contractors. Um, years ago, I had a friend who was working for a defense contractor and she had a security clearance. And I said, well, what do you do? And she said, I can't say. And I said, well, I understand, you know, there's security and all that kind of stuff. But can you just give me like a general idea? What do you do? And she said, no, I, I can't say because I don't know. And I said, what? <laughs> I said, I said, what do you mean you don't know? You're, you know, you're, it's some sort of technology thing. You certainly know what you're making. You're designing something. Um, and she said, they have compartmentalized the job to the degree uh, that I do not actually know what I'm working on. I'm and making so, a pump. <laughs> so she doesn't. A very, very high speed pump. Yeah. So she, she really wasn't, at least at that time, she wasn't even aware of what she was doing, but she, she needed high clearance. So, you know, I'm with, I'm with Bill on this. Um, I, once you leave government, I, I think you lose your security clearance if you need to be read in on a situational basis for something that is crucial to national security or the president needs your advice. So, heck, the president can add you to his staff. I mean, you know, if you really need to do that. Um, I think anybody who gets a security clearance, it should be, you know, we should definitely start a campaign to get Steve's wife off of this because that's... Oh, uh, clearly. Just, she, she's a threat mm -hmm. to the Republic. No, 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 no. no. You've got this completely backwards. <laughs> she's a perfectly reliable source. It's Steve who should not be allowed that, to have a Well, that's what clearance. I'm saying. It's proximity. It's association that I'm concerned about. It's <laughs> not, no, 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 no. She's, she's, she's extremely confident. It's, it's Steve drug... Steve drunk blogging the latest, you know, missile interceptor test from uh, from Vandenberg Air Force Base that I'm concerned about. Oh, my god. It goodness. only happened the well, one time, Bill. Come on. So so on the one hand, I, I think that that this ought to be standard practice. And frankly, that'd be the high road position for the president to take on something like this. Um, I think he does. Uh, I'm sure I was going to say risk looking petty, but he's not risking looking petty. He's trying to. This is very intentional on his part. He wants to put to put this kind of uh, to stir up this kind of um, chatter on the left and this fear that you know here he is this fascist president uh, clamping down on free speech among <laughs> former Democratic administration members when he's doing no such thing. Um, but I think that. Uh, it, it ought to be applied in an even-handed way. And if he were that kind of a president, he should stand up and say, you know, it came to my attention that John Brennan still has a security clearance. And it occurred to me, why should anybody who is passed out of government service have a, a security clearance any longer? And so I am going to ask my, uh, my legal advisor here, what is the proper route to pursue this, whether it's within the executive purview for me to unilaterally issue an executive order revoking security clearances for people who are no longer in active government service or whether Congress needs to do that. But anyway, I think this is an, an area we need to explore. That would, of course, have, have made him look much more statesmanlike and diplomatic than he typically likes to look. <laughs> and so, so uh, however, I, I, it does concern me that so many thousands upon thousands of people allegedly have access to government secrets that I begin to wonder exactly what was it that Ed Snowden did wrong? For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.